Welcome to the Travel Geek Headquarters here in Taiwan. I wanted to talk a little bit about my masks. I love masks. They mean so much to uh, different cultural aspects of travel. They really mean a lot to the, 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 the people and in, in, in the cultures that you're visiting at the time. They have a lot of artistic value. They put a face to the place you're visiting, the culture that you're seeing, the, the experiences that you're having at that time. I, I recommend all the time to uh, look for masks when you're traveling. They, they, they're they a great collector's item. They make great gifts. Uh, they support the local community because almost always they're carved out of local woods by local people. I just like the idea of, of masks. So here's my collection. This particular mask is from Thailand. It's made of one small piece of palm wood and features the golden crusted face of a Buddha as influenced by the Hindu lineage. It's a pretty traditional mask and is found all over the country. This one is about 5 by 7 inches, but they make them as big as doorways. This mask is from the islands throughout eastern Indonesia. This design is actually a rodent trap used for catching animals in the wild. Strings that run throughout the wooden spires were used as a trigger to ensnare the hapless animal. But in more recent times, it's used as a decorative item. I've seen lots of different styles of this mask. Some have even been used as hanging holsters for chopsticks, and they're typically made from coconut shells. This mask is found in and around the middle islands of the Philippines. They even have a Polynesian or, or Fiji island feel to them. The wood is very light, almost like a balsam. Generally, they're painted. This one is stained. These two masks were originally from the same piece of wood. The front of the face was cut, and then the piece was split to form two identical faces. They represent a female and male smoking couple, which could customarily be seen throughout the Ifuga regions in northern Luzon in the Philippines. These masks hold a special place because they spoke to a time that no longer exists. The smoking eventually got so bad that the whole of Ifugao decided to become smoke-free. This is one of the few remaining remnants of that era. This mask, standing more than three feet tall, is one of the larger representations of a lion, but they come in all sizes. It is carved by one specific tribe in the hinterland of the Philippines and has become wildly popular as it's now a common design. I picked this particular mask up at a flea market in Taiwan, but it's rarely seen outside the Philippines. It's stained with a dark mahogany color. This classically Malaysian mask was carved with an eerie countenance. It's said to have power to ward off evil spirits and can be seen in manifold form, usually in more of a circle than this squared version, mounted on the entryways of temples and palace walls. It's customarily seen in the south of peninsular Malaysia, but they can also be found on the island of Borneo. I bought this mask in the hills of Chiang Rai on my way back to Thailand through Laos. The far north locale where I bought this mask ultimately pointed to a tribe rather than a region. It was made by a Montagnard tribe named the Zhao, who have been living in the region spanning from Myanmar to Vietnam for the last few hundred years. It's made of a lighter wood and carved with rudimentary designs above and below the edifice. This is a mask from Nepal. I would have rather bought it in Nepal, but the story behind it is no less interesting. I was in Hong Kong and I met a lady who had been traveling back and forth from her hometown in Kathmandu, making money from selling her family's carvings. This one is more black in color, as it was soaked in dark tea leaves to bring out that color. So there you go. If you've ever seen any of the masks and stuff in the background while I'm talking about travel stuff, advice, and tutorials, and travel tips, and photo advice, that's what they're all about. I take a, a lot of pride in these. They're a, a, a real representation, a, a true symbol of, of why it is that I like to travel. I mean, they represent the culture of a different uh, community of people. They represent the religious beliefs or the trials and tribulations that they've had throughout their their time as a community uh, fighting for their individuality. And so that to me means something. That's why I travel. So anyway, uh, that's it for this edition of The Travel Geek. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, go to kyladoll.com slash travel geek for more information.